Today on Discover Wisconsin, explore a place with hometown traditions, friendly faces, and comfort food galore. When you're here, you're home. Hello and welcome to Discover Wisconsin. This is an anthem For those who look for more And never say they've seen it all Windows down Let's take a ride The good lands great Tonight Outside of the hustle and bustle of the city of Madison lies the community of Sun Prairie. Now, if you're looking for that small town charm, you will find it here. But as one of Wisconsin's fastest growing communities, Sun Prairie is full of surprises. Sun Prairie is just a quick 10 minute drive down Highway 151 from Madison's east side. If you love Madison, you can spend some time there, but if you're looking to get out of the city a little bit and trek into some of the communities just outside of town, Sun Prairie better be on your list. It really is kind of that perfect size city. It's not too big, not too small. From a beloved local pizza place to a historic racetrack, Sun Prairie has more than one claim to fame, including one of Wisconsin's most famous residents. Georgia O'Keeffe is one of the most influential artists in America, and she was born right here in Sun Prairie. Dennis Erickson is the curator of the Sun Prairie Historical Library and Museum, home to an exhibit that honors Georgia O'Keeffe's work and her life in Sun Prairie. Georgia's mother would bring Georgia and two sisters into town every Saturday afternoon to have uh, art lessons. So it's safe to say her artistry and talent was really born right here in Sun Prairie. Are there any pieces in the exhibit that you find really, really fascinating? This painting of a barn was done by Georgia in 1928. Georgia came back to visit her sister Catherine and told her sister, let's go out in the country and paint a barn. And what says Wisconsin better than a red dairy barn? She's right about that. I hate to admit this, but I actually had no idea that Georgia O'Keeffe was born in Sun Prairie. She is such a celebrated figure here that they even have a festival in her honor. Sun Prairie has a very vibrant art scene. It was so obvious to me that Georgia O'Keeffe has influenced this city in the best of ways. Sun Prairie's emphasis on the arts is clear to any visitor, with beautiful displays of public art scattered throughout the city, including this colorful mural right off Main Street. Sun Prairie is kind of recognized by its sunburst. That was our number one design plan, was to have a sunburst in the back of the mural, and then, then we would tell the history of Sun Prairie, and we wanted to honor the service members and uh, you know the EMS and the people of Sun Prairie that are important to us. Sun Prairie has a very supportive arts community. There's a lot to see when you're just out on the street, not just the murals, but there, there are sculptures in the, in the downtown park, at the library. I love the dragons at Holm and Lindsay. They just add an element of, of uh, joy. If you can see a burst of color, a sculpture, just, just for a second out of your day, it just takes you to a different place than you know, your daily grind. While there's plenty of beautiful art to take in during a trip to Sun Prairie, I'm creating my own masterpiece at Board & Brush. Okay, so we've got a couple different steps here. Just a quick overview. Okay. We're going to start out by sanding. Then we're going to distress using these tools. That's fun. All right. <laughs> then we're going to go and we're going to do some staining. We're going to put gloves on. We're going to grab some stain. We're going to stain it all up nice and pretty. All right. Um, we're going to go and put a custom stencil down. There's no freehand shenanigans. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be perfect awesome. when you're finished. Um, and then we'll do one last bit of distressing to make it look like it's a piece of barn wood that's like all vintage and been hanging out forever. Yeah, sounds easy. Okay, let's so do let's it. get this out of the way. Okay, and let's get you sanding. Okay, ready to move on? I'm ready to move on. This is the fun part. Ooh. This is therapeutic in like the it best is. way. Possible. It is, isn't it? <laughs> Step three, okay. you're gonna dip it right into the stain and you wanna get every surface of the board, including all those little divots. So 
So even really people who aren't particularly crafty, I mean, this is actually, I think, the ideal kind of spot for them too. Like you don't have to be a total Pinterest know-it-all, I think, to be successful here. We'll take you step-by-step step through the whole process for our workshops and people leave saying, wow, I feel totally empowered. I did this myself. That's awesome. All right, you ready? You dropping the brush? You dropping it? You done? Done. We done. This is where you get to see all of your hard work. Oh my gosh, this looks so awesome. Take a look, what do you think? I love it, <laughs> that is beautiful. This is my definitely my new favorite piece. Check out my finished product and find out how to book your own board and brush session at discoverwisconsin.com. Coming up, Jake dives into Sun Prairie's history and community traditions. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sun Prairie, right here on Discover Wisconsin. I lived in Sun Prairie now for oh, over five years. And one of the great traditions here in Sun Prairie is Groundhog's Day. You know, Puxatawney may have Phil, but uh, we've got Jimmy the Groundhog. 1949 was the first time we had uh, Groundhog Day here in, in Sun Prairie. And it's continued ever since. We have a celebration down at Cannery Square in Sun Prairie. And uh, Jimmy comes in a big red fire truck. And the mayor actually uh, engages in conversation with Jimmy to determine what actually is the uh, prognostication that Jimmy's going to make. We take pride in the fact that Jimmy the Groundhog is right over 80% of the time. And uh, Puxatawney, is, uh, Phil, is only right uh, less than 40% of the time. So clearly, Jimmy, is, we've got the right groundhog, and, and we are the uh, groundhog capital of the world. Groundhog's Day here in Sun Prairie is really just a fun event where everybody gets involved, but it's also rooted in some strong history as well. What I would recommend to people is to really get a sense of the history of Sun Prairie. Go on into the Historic Museum and pick up a guidebook, and then you can kind of look and see some of the great places to, to check out as you walk through downtown. Well, Paul, I mean, I look around and see some of the old buildings here. This looks like this has been a happening place for a long time. This is the heart of Sun Prairie, Bristol and Main Street. Across from us is the first phone exchange across the street. It had been a movie theater. And on this side of the street is Old City Hall from 1895. So I had a chance to uh, take part in the walking tour with Mayor Esser, and I'll tell you what, you talk about a guy with a lot of knowledge of the history here in Sun Prairie. Boy, Paul really has it. Well, Paul, I know living here in Sun Prairie, this is one of the most iconic places in town. Isn't this beautiful? Oh. This is the Birkenbein Mansion. So the Birkenbein family were sheep farmers, and all this land behind us was all part of their farm. This stood out here at the edge of the town. This was the edge of Sun Prairie when that was built. Just hearing what Mayor Esser had to say about the history of some of the buildings and, and what it's taken place there over the last 100 years, I think it, you kind of have a different look at Sun Prairie after that. You know, downtown Sun Prairie is known for a lot of different shops. What I love about it is their unique shops. In the fall here in Sun Prairie, if you drive through downtown or walk through, you can't miss the street of scarecrows. There's literally one after another, and uh, kids get a chance to kind of create these on their own, and uh, it's just a fun event that the community gets involved in. After a day of shopping and exploring, hey, stop in at Eddie's Ale House for a bite to eat or a local brew. The beer list here is impressive and features dozens of craft breweries, many from right here in Wisconsin. And the best part, if you find a drink you love at Eddie's, head to Cannery Wine and Spirits. Chances are you can buy some there to take home. We're a very select, unique location to find great craft beer, select wines, whiskeys, bourbons, rums, tequilas. We're a, a place that uh, people can come to and have a different experience. We also offer weekly tastings. We always make sure that the brewery, the winery, the distiller themselves are in. This is their product, it's their stage, so um, especially with so many Wisconsin-based uh, producers that are popping up and growing, uh, the world of, of alcohol has not become so global but much more local, so our sampling bar is, is really a, a key element for customers to come in and, and try different things before they buy it. And the other thing at Cannery Wine and Spirits is we offer home brewing classes, uh, wine making classes. We'll take you through that whole process. We have the equipment and more importantly we have the staff on board that knows how to do it. 
The homebrew class today was really interesting. I never really thought about what went into making beer from start to finish. Oh, I kind of got the itch. I feel like I, I want to get uh, my own little kit and go home and start making it. It's a good taste. Head to discoverwisconsin.com to download a free itinerary to help plan your trip to Sun Prairie. Coming up, I discover the secret behind a Sun Prairie classic. We'll be right back. Discover Wisconsin is back exploring Sun Prairie. Being a neighbor of Madison, some people may not automatically think of Sun Prairie as being a foodie destination, but in this city, there's no shortage of flair and flavor. And for some of the best flavors, there's no better place than Sassy Cow Creamery. Out here at Sassy Cow Creamery, we make a quite a few dairy products. We make organic milk as well as traditional milk, and then also ice cream's big, especially in the summertime. A couple of our biggest flavors are salted caramel for sure, dark cherry chocolate, along with a lot of the other staples that kids like, uh, the Blue Moons and the Supermans and the cookie doughs. We like to have the opportunity for people to come out and visit us, and when they get here, they can see all of the milk production and the ice cream production, as well as different activities we have up here at the creamery. We really do enjoy having families out and bringing their kids, and it's a nice chance for people to spend some time together. And if you can't make it out to the farm, Beans and Cream Coffee Shop in downtown Sun Prairie is one of the few places in the area you can find Sassy Cow products. You know, you can't talk about Sun Prairie's food scene without mentioning pizza, and maybe you think you can get a slice anywhere, but hey, as they say in Sun Prairie, there's pizza, and then there's Sal's. Come on. I grew up in a food family. My grandparents immigrated from Italy, and I had grown up in New Jersey. The style of pizza in Trenton is a little bit different. It's built in reverse. So you start with you start with the, the pizza dough and a little olive oil, and then it gets the cheese, and then the sauce goes on the top. I want them to feel like they're 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 eating something that is authentic and it's rooted in Italian American uh, history. We have had really good success taking that style that I grew up with and filtering it through Wisconsin and making something that we think is pretty unique. For the longest time, people in Sun Prairie were saying the best pizza in Madison is in Sun Prairie. And that used to make me like smile a little bit because you know I never intended that, that things like that would happen. And I'm grateful for it every day. Well, Pat, you know why I'm here. Yep. I'm here to learn the secrets to making a great tomato pie. All right, and we're gonna do the best to uh, show you how to do that without giving away all of our secrets. Oh, okay, sounds good, I understand. <laughs> the great thing about making pizzas here at Sal's is you have so much variety, and there's a lot of heart and energy that goes into the making of his pizzas and the dishes that he serves. You know, having to you know, throw the pizza up in the air, hadn't had a chance to do that before, but uh, Pat makes it so easy and uh, really explained it real well, and uh, there's definitely an art to it. <laughs> and there it is. Hey. Looks like a piece of art right there, huh? It does, and you made it. Hey, I'm pretty impressed. I say it's time to eat. Check out photos from our time in Sun Prairie and share your own photos with us on Instagram using the hashtag DiscoverWisconsin. Coming up, Sun Prairie takes its love of one particular food to a whole new level. And later, Mariah makes some friends on the ice rink. Stay with us. We're back exploring Sun Prairie right here on Discover Wisconsin. Sun Prairie's food scene has a lot of unique opportunities to try something new, but at the Sweet Corn Festival held at Angel Park every August, it's back to basics. What I enjoy is butter, salt, and a little pepper. That is, that's really all I ever enjoy on top of sweet corn. It's very consistent. We gotta keep it, keep it as is so we've got the best flavor for, for the people to consume. This corn that we have here came from Wild Rose, Wisconsin. We haul it here. It's, uh, it drops in a truck of about 20 to 25 ton of corn, and it runs 17 minutes to cook the corn. From there, we put the baskets in trucks and we haul it down to the uh, corn fest. The corn fest really means community uh, getting together. It's letting the people of the southern Wisconsin know of Sun Prairie, and, uh, and that's really what it all amounts to. That's what the Sweet Corn Festival is. Angel Park may be filled with sweet corn during the festival, but on a typical Sunday night in Sun Prairie, things look a little different around here. Oh. 
Owned and operated by the Sun Prairie Volunteer Fire Department, Angel Park Speedway is one of the premier dirt racetracks in the Midwest. Since the 1930s, racing enthusiasts have filled the stands to cheer on their favorite drivers, including NASCAR legends Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart. I think it's neat to be asked even to race here. Angel Park Speedway is special because of the history behind it. So it's, it's a really neat experience knowing we've, we get to race on essentially like sacred ground. If you're in search of a little peace and quiet after the races, head over to Patrick Marsh. Patrick Marsh is a 315-acre wildlife area. It's being restored back to Tallgrass Prairie for wildlife such as ducks that um, breed and nest in the grasslands. Each summer you can see a couple hundred American white pelicans out here at Patrick Marsh, and it's a unique opportunity to actually see them on the water. They spend their winters along the coasts, and they spend their summers uh, in inland waters where they, they nest and breed in shallow marshes. And on your way back into town, you can pick up a day pass to the Prairie Athletic Club, one of the largest health clubs in Wisconsin. We have a full-size water park with multiple slides and pools and zip line and rock climbing wall. We have an indoor soccer field, sprint track and circular track. Health starts with activity and um, there are so many ways to approach it. The key is that you enjoy it and that's why I think the number of options and amenities that we have allows so many different people to make this part of their lifestyle. Another great spot here in the area and one worthy of being on your Sun Prairie bucket list is the Sun Prairie Ice Arena. The Sun Prairie Ice Arena is one of the most positive places in our community. We offer ice hockey, we offer figure skating, and we have a dance academy. Kids come in here and they learn life lessons. It's not all about winning and losing. They learn sportsmanship, those great life lessons you learn from sports. They offer lots of hockey at the Sun Prairie Ice Arena, but you can also take a figure skating lesson, or you can show up for open skate. Basically, however you want to spend your day in the ice, you can do it at the Sun Prairie Ice Arena. I am going to attempt some Michelle Kwan moves. Wish me luck. What kind of programs do you offer here at the Sun Prairie Ice Arena? Um, so we do a learn to skate. Um, so we pretty much teach anyone, whoever wants to skate, um, the basics of skating. And then um, if you want to go into figure skating, you kind of keep rising up through those levels and then you start to learn more like jumps and spins and those fun things. And what class will I be taking today? Um, you'll probably be taking the basic one class. So no triple axles today. No. <laughs> You know, I always find this job to be very humbling because I get to, a lot of times, um, be taught by people much younger than me. They gave me great advice, great little tips on my technique as a figure skater, and they're just fun. Every place I've visited here in Sun Prairie, every single person I've met, they've been so welcoming. You really do feel like you're at home, even though this is something totally out of my comfort zone. Even as Sun Prairie continues to grow, the one thing that never changes about this community is the feeling that when you're here, you're home. I'm Mariah Hopperman, and I'll see you next week on...